the film begins by showing a man named Brian Godlock, facing a tragedy. He runs as fast as he can, chasing a group of gangsters engaged in a shootout from inside their car. Brian picks up a piece of metal from a dumpster. After spotting the gangster's car that just shot his adversaries, he hurls the piece of metal towards the gangster's car's windshield. However, this attempt fails to make the gangster's car crash. Instead, the gangsters turn around and pursue Brian while continuing to shoot at him. In a desperate and directionless state, Brian notices a forklift heading towards him. He jumps onto the forklift, then turns and lands on the pursuing car, causing him to fall. However, one other person manages to survive. That individual then exits the car and shoots at Brian, who is attempting to flee. The scene shifted to the operating room, the doctor successfully rescued Brian, and he underwent surgery to remove the bullet lodged in his neck. After the surgery was completed, Detective Dennis Bassel visited Brian in the recovery room. However, since Brian was still unconscious, Dennis left his business card on the table. Brian began his recovery process following the shooting incident. Unfortunately, fake had dealt him a cruel hand, as the shooting incident had left him unable to speak, and this brought about deep disappointment and despair within him. Brian then recalled the tragic moments when it all happened. Approaching the Christmas celebration, he played in the yard with his son, Taylor. Suddenly, from a distance, they heard gunshots and saw two cars chasing each other while exchanging gunfire, passing in front of their house. Brian immediately reacted by lying down to protect his son and wife. It was then that he realized Taylor had been shot when he saw blood on his son's clothes. This is the background of the opening scene of the movie. Later, Brian found a business card belonging to Dennis. The next day, Brian visited the police station to meet with Dennis. While waiting for Detective Dennis at the police office, he noticed photos and names of wanted gangsters displayed on the wall. Brian then took pictures of those from his cell phone. Brian's attention was drawn to one photo of a gangster named Playa, who happened to be the one who had shot him. When Detective Dennis returned to his office, Brian had already left. In his home, after reprinting all the gangster photos he had taken, Brian set December 24th as his day of revenge. Brian deliberately chose the date as it coincided with the first anniversary of his son's death. The time to execute his plan is approaching in the next eight months. During this period, Brian will prepare himself by improving his physical condition, honing his fighting and shooting skills, and buying a used car to modify for his operation. In addition to firearms training, Brian also purchased several automatic weapons from the black market. However, unfortunate luck struck him again. His wife, Saya, could no longer tolerate Brian's increasingly repressive and obsessed behavior regarding his plan for revenge for their son's death. Therefore, Saya, Brian's wife, decided to leave him temporarily. After his wife left, Brian filled his days with intensive training to ensure his plan could run smoothly according to the set schedule. One evening, Brian visited a hotel that served as Playa's headquarters. Brian was visiting the location and aimed to sketch the area and gather information about the gang. After months of relentless effort to improve himself, significant changes were evident in Brian. His physical condition was now even better, his shooting skills became more precise than average, and his driving skills had become extraordinary, comparable to Michael Schumacher's abilities. One day, as Brian was leaving a supermarket, he accidentally encountered Playa, who was giving money to children at the location. Seeing an opportunity in front of him, Brian then took out the knife he had with him. Brian attempted to attack Playa at that moment. However, Brian abandoned his intention when he saw too many children nearby. As Playa was about to leave, Brian, who had intended to approach him, accidentally bumped into one of Playa's henchmen. Playa's girlfriend then committed an act of harassment against Brian by pouring ice cream on his face. The following night, Brian secretly entered the house of one of Playa's gang members, and from there, he kidnapped one of the group members. Upon arriving at his home, Brian interrogated the man to obtain information about the group's activities and the source of their funds. However, during the interrogation process, the man suddenly attacked Brian. A fierce fight ensued between them until, eventually, the man managed to injure Brian. Initially, Brian faced difficulties, but thanks to Robert Archer Lynn's brilliant scriptwriting and director John Woo's extraordinary direction, Brian ultimately overcame the man. On December 24, Brian had chosen this date to seek revenge against the gang led by Playa. He carefully prepared all the ammunition that would be used in the attack. Before executing his plan, Brian meticulously wrote a letter and then entered his child's room. Afterwards, Brian also took a moment to check on his wife, Saya, who was in the process of painting a picture of their child, Taylor. Brian also took some time to visit his child's grave, bringing a toy as a tribute and remembrance. After visiting his son's grave, 
Brian handed over the bald man he had kidnapped to Detective Dennis by leaving him in front of the detective's house. Not long after, the police arrived with the man. Detective Dennis then opened the red envelope containing a Christmas card. The card sternly said, what you should have done, it ends tonight. Brian listed the people he would hunt inside the envelope. Additionally, it included information about the crimes they had committed and the locations where these individuals could be found. On his way to Playa headquarters, Brian was listening to the police radio to monitor the movements of the gangsters when he learned that two thugs were in the middle of robbing the couple not far from his location. Brian attempted to change direction in his car and then collided with two individuals known as members of the gang. Brian even stabbed and injured one of them. Meanwhile, the other gang member managed to get into Brian's vehicle. Brian tried to thwart their efforts in attempting to knock one of the thugs out of his car, but he was instead confronted with a pistol threat from that individual. However, thanks to the brilliant scenario by Robert Archer, Brian managed to overcome the situation and seize the firearm from the individual who was threatening him. Brian was ultimately forced to use the weapon and shot the individual. After this incident, Brian went to the Playa Gang's headquarters. He disposed of two fingers, which were the identity markers of two Playa Gang members he had killed. Playa, mistakenly believing that this incident was the work of their gang's enemies, then mobilized all their gang members for revenge. Playa's actions triggered a war between the gangs, resulting in shootouts among the gang members. As a result, a police officer became a victim in the chaos. Brian, who was present at the scene, became a witness when a female police officer became embroiled in a confrontation. He quickly accelerated his car and began to attack the gang members. One of the gang members, who had initially recorded Brian's heroic actions, later sent the video to Playa. Just as Brian was on the verge of successfully rescuing the female officer, he was shot by one of the gangsters. However, Brian didn't give up. He returned to his car and forcefully collided with the gang member who had previously filmed the incident. After exiting the vehicle, Brian seized the still recording phone, shot the man, and sent the video to Playa. Brian then took the phone with him. From this incident, Playa realized that the person who had dared to threaten him was Brian, the one he had shot before. With his anger reaching its peak, Playa then contacted Ruiz and sent a message promising a reward of $5,000 if Ruiz succeeded in killing Brian. Upon learning of this message, Brian approached Ruiz and drove his car as if to provoke Ruiz to chase him. As expected, Brian's tactic successfully enraged Ruiz, prompting him to pursue Brian immediately. Brian easily evaded the attacks against him with driving skills reminiscent of Michael Schumacher. Furthermore, he managed to eliminate one group of gangsters who had previously used him as a tool for murder. Then Brian crashed into a car in front of him, causing Ruiz to collide with the vehicle and unable to chase Brian. The chase continued, with a thug on a motorcycle also pursuing Brian. However, once again, Brian managed to evade him and ended the motorcyclist's life. Meanwhile, Playa ordered all of his subordinates to return to their headquarters. Through the Nokia mobile phone he held, Brian also received this information and quickly joined their team using a motorcycle he had obtained after taking the life of a man. In the subsequent development of the story, Brian successfully infiltrated the location. He managed to detonate a car, causing the lower-ranking members of Playa's gang to panic and become frightened. Brian continued his search, floor by floor, eliminating each member of the Playa gang one by one without leaving anyone behind. It was at that moment that he was suddenly attacked by Ruiz, who turned out to be still alive. A highly unavent duel ensued, where Brian suffered incredible brutality from Ruiz. Meanwhile, a detective named Dennis had arrived at the scene. Dennis stealthily infiltrated the building to apprehend the gang members. In short, Brian eventually managed to defeat Ruiz after the fierce battle. On the other hand, Dennis was suddenly attacked by Playa's henchmen. However, the detective managed to kill them. When they arrived on the same floor, Dennis and Brian pointed their weapons at each other. During the tense situation, suddenly Playa's girlfriend opened fire on them with hundreds of bullets from an automatic weapon. Brian managed to sneak up and held the woman at gunpoint, forcing her to surrender. However, the demon woman pretended innocent, making Brian reluctant to shoot her. But when Brian let his guard down, the cunning woman pulled out a pistol and began shooting at Brian and Dennis, who were beside her, Brian still surviving, then shot directly at the woman's head. With wounds covering his entire body, Brian arrived in the Playa room. Playa welcomed Brian's arrival with a rapid barrage of shots, holding both guns in his hands. As Playa was about to execute Brian, fortunately, Detective Dennis arrived just in time and shot Playa. Brian seized this opportunity to retaliate with punches and beat Playa. With a deep sense of vengeance for his son's death, Brian proceeded to strangle Playa until the bald man faced his demise slowly. After completing his mission of avenging his son's death, 
Brian lay motionless, and Detective Dennis approached Brian's lifeless body, clutching the gunshot wound in his abdomen. At the movie's end, Saya, Brian's wife, is seen reading a heartfelt apology letter from her husband, who is now gone forever. Brian doesn't blame Saya for choosing to leave him as he knows Saya had tried her best until she could no longer endure. Furthermore, Brian apologizes for being unable to change the circumstances, even though he was willing to die trying. And thus, the film reaches its conclusion.